Um, greetings, everybody. I'm uh, with my friend and meditator, Sarah, who is a wonderful artist. We're in her studio in uh, the outskirts of Brighton. And um, so we're going to have a chat about Sarah's TM journey and story. <laughs> Greetings, good morning. Morning. On a Monday. Uh, <laughs> so first thing Monday. First thing Monday, yes. Hardcore. Uh, so I th- th- the way I normally do it is I just, I, I go in a chronological way. It just mm-hmm. seems easier. Yeah. And, and the, the point is to just have a chat about TM so that other people could hear yeah. um, your uh, experience. Mm-hmm. Simple. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Okay, so wh- when did you learn? How long have you been doing it? How long have you been uh, practicing? So I think I started during the pandemic, so it was maybe two or three years. Yeah, three years maybe. I mean, uh, I started with you, so that was the yes. that was when I started. So if you can remember, <laughs> um, I reckon it was about three years ago. Okay. Um, but I'd I'd sort of tried meditation before that, maybe you know three years ago again before that. Um, but I kind of uh, it, it was at a point in my life where I felt like there was a lot going on in personal life, and I felt a bit kind of emotionally discombobulated. So I was looking for something, and I kind of was drawn to meditation. Kind of, I felt like I knew that that would help, but not just in that, but in in a general sense. So I started going to my local Buddhist center and getting involved in the meditations there. But when I tried to do it at home, I just couldn't do it. Like not even for five minutes, my crazy mind would just not let me do it. And I just thought, I can't do this. I just can't do it. So I gave it up. And then um, like a couple of years later, some friends were talking about transcendental meditation. I I kind of thought, "Hmm, this sounds a bit different. And I was intrigued enough to kind of find out more. And then I Googled, you know, in Brighton and and you popped up. So then, you know, I I listened to you talking about it and I thought, oh, I'm I'm intrigued enough to try this. So um, that's when I started doing TM and it was like a complete game changer. Just the mantra, the fact that there's a mantra, it gave, I felt like it gives your crazy mind just something to fiddle with and allowed me to kind of stay in the meditation space for like 20 minutes which I you know I thought of, thought of thought was impossible and I do it every day like at least once a day now regular and it, you know I here can, I can do here it. in this studio uh yeah usually usually I arrive in the studio and that's the first thing I do because I feel like it kind of centers me into the present and allows me to like when I'm painting it it, it sort of I need to get into a real focus state um, I suppose what you'd call like flow state or you know what people call it like that and um, doing um, meditation helps me get there mm. quicker when you went to the when you were at the Buddhist center yeah and you uh, w- was it easy to did you say that it was easy to meditate at the center but when you got home it was impossible um, I, I didn't, I wouldn't say I found it easy at the center, but like I was, I was there in it, in a room, <laughs> which <laughs> kind of, you know, either you get up and leave in the middle of it or you stay. So I, I, I wouldn't say I felt it, I felt that it was easy, but just by nature of being there, I did it, but it wasn't something that I could translate to continuing my own practice. Um, what did what 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 type of meditation was it? What did they? What were you supposed to do? Um, this is a while ago now, so I have to remember. But um, uh, they they would sort of uh, there would be a talk about a particular subject beforehand, and then I think they would start the meditation kind of talking about that. Then there'd be some silence. Uh-huh. And then you'd just be in silence for however much length of time and then, you know, bring you out of it. Oh, I see. So they would lead you into doing nothing. Yeah. And then take you out of doing yeah. nothing. Okay. Yeah. And and the difference with TM is that with you have something to, to do. The mantra. The mantra. Yeah, it made all the difference, to me anyway. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so you've... So it was a game changer because it helped you uh, 
um, kind of settle your mm. crazy mind. Yeah, yeah. Was that just during the meditation or did it percolate into life? Definitely percolated into life. <laughs> How? I mean, that's How? one of the big advantages of doing it. I think the big benefits. Um, just uh, like I feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, in life, you your mind suddenly takes hold of some thoughts and you you can feel like you're in a uh, like a storm. Like if you imagine in, in the stormy sea being like tumbled around and battered. And I feel like TM has allowed me to kind of just sort of zoom out slightly so you're just like looking at the thing rather than being completely battered around by it which um obviously is a lot more uh, is a lot sort of more peaceful and calmer and i feel like it's kind of it's training that default pathway instead of just staying in this you know tumultuous thought process you can kind of like be it's a different perspective it's like that's just thoughts and you can sort of apart a little bit mm. from that that's a and and that's in general li- in life gen- yeah. general life interesting and h- how long did it take for that to happen it was kind of gradual um I don't I I, I, I'm not really aware of how long it took because I feel like it was it's been a gradual process and just the kind of cumulative effect of having a regular practice just kind of increase makes this bigger and Mm. stronger and you you generally meditate just once a day yeah sometimes twice but not very often usually once and interesting and you're still you're still functioning this in the same way as you were, because because if I hear that, that it it could be seen that you're kind of aloof from life and detached. No, not and at that, all. But it's not, not like all. that. It's definitely not like that. Can you describe it's, it? Um, so it's I guess it's it, this particular thing is just a changing relationship with your thoughts, and so sort of having a greater awareness that your thoughts are just your thoughts they're not necessarily true and it doesn't mean that I'm not connected to life or I'm not present it just means that I have greater understanding about my inner critic my inner crazy mind which you know is is really helpful ah so the the capacity to think and assess and judge and interpret is still there but you're not hijacked but yeah, by, yeah, yeah. by it. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, I would say that. Interesting, because yeah. I sometimes like to try and explain it to people and say that... Because um, the mind... A lot of people think that... Think, haha. Sometimes if, they, if they're... If they're... What? Uh, if their thoughts are troublesome, mm. that they think the way out is to not think okay. right so they yeah. come to meditate and they try to not think yeah but i maintain and i'm and it's the same as you that thoughts aren't the problem it's that they they're the master is that it it's, it's not the thoughts they're, they're that are the problem you. it's your relationship yeah it's your relationship to, them, to the thoughts I would say. Yeah. yeah it's not like you disassociate or check out or become unconscious you just have a different relationship yeah I'd say to your thoughts yeah did you find when you first learnt did you find it easy to get into a daily habit or did it require discipline um I'd say that like at, at first there were a few times where for whatever reason like you know your life gets busy so you drop it for a minute but Like, I always wanted to go back to it, which, you know, in the past when I wasn't doing TM, I would have just dropped it forever. So I I, I always came back to it. And now it's become so much of a, just a habit, like brushing your teeth or something that like, I don't really think about not doing it. It's just like, okay, yeah, when when I'm doing it now. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay. And 
So when you first learned, what kind of headspace were you in? You, you, were you a bit chaotic, chaotic mind? Is, um, that, is that what drew you to seeking it? Um, so that's what drew me to meditation in the very beginning when I was doing the Buddhist meditation center. But um, when I started doing TM, I think I was just in a, 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 you know, a normal state of chaotic mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> Isn't everyone always struggling with that? Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's that, it. Wasn't anything particularly unusual. I think. I think it was just baseline, a fact, baseline, base, chaos. baseline chaos. Baseline chaos, exactly. I think it was just. I, that's, I started then just for the fact that my friends had been talking about it, and that was kind of the prompt to kind of, you know, I knew. I always knew that I wanted to to meditate somehow, but I hadn't found a way. And then, you know, my friends mentioned this and I thought maybe this is the way. Okay. You found the right one eventually. Yeah. The yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. The one and only. <laughs> Let the right one in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, so it sounds like you've described, you know, overall a shift in your relationship with thinking. And mm. how about your work? Um, has it affected how you work and the output and work related any any um, changes so as i mentioned it's it kind of helps me get into that focus state where um you're just like in the present you're not worrying about future deadlines or past podcasts that you did um and uh it's it, it's that state of like just getting out of your own way and just being connected to something deeper um, which is in, which I think is why I was drawn to painting, to be honest, in the first date. I, I knew that that was kind of really essential f to me like, and really necessary. And that's when I started painting. I'm completely self-taught. Um, so, yeah, it, it, and it helps to get to that state. Um, and I'd also say, like, sometimes, you know, if I've got a lot of work to do for a particular thing I can start to get like anxious and overwhelmed thinking about how much, how much I've got to do and it kind of just brings that down and gets that in perspective a bit so I'm not stressing about you know um, stuff that I've got to do right right what how does it what does it feel like to do the meditation for you so I feel like every meditation is kind of has got its own kind of flavor and I don't I don't kind of judge each one because I I'm really aware of the like I said the cumulative effect of that it has on your life so it's it's sort of not important what happens during each the, the important thing is the regular thing just do it to be sitting down and doing it but having uh, having said that each you know so sometimes really interesting things happen <laughs> during the meditation. Like uh, sometimes there's just like a mental moment of clarity about something, whether it's like self-awareness or, or something in my work or like a problem I've been stressing over for ages and haven't found a solution. It's like, it's like the clouds will clear and this sort of deeper truth will just reveal itself. And it's just like, okay <laughs> I mean that in itself is worth doing it for you know because it's almost like it's almost like your stupid conscious mind like just sits quiet for a minute and then you know something a higher a deeper wisdom kind of is allowed through um so that happens wow. sometimes <laughs> that's really cool it's like the, the gatekeeper steps out of the way <laughs> exactly that like I really think so <laughs> um and sometimes it can be like calming so sometimes like if if my mind is particularly busy it can feel like I'm my thoughts are just thrashing around like maybe for the first 19 minutes <laughs> and, then, and then it kind of like calms and then you've just got this sort of calm you're you're shored up to this kind of calm place um that you absolutely didn't start at so you know that's it's it's sort of good for that um and uh yeah it's it's just very different each time sometimes it gives like like i've had a experience where it's given me kind of a weird perspective 
on like time like suddenly I've kind of felt really connected to like ancient past and far future and kind of feeling like I'm just in this brief moment in like the arc of time and then like what a gift that we've been giving this amazing just brief moment of consciousness in you know in in the whole of time we're just here for this small moment and then that can give you a better perspective on your stupid daily struggles right. <laughs> you get it <laughs> yeah 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 that's cool if you if you had a friend or someone you knew who was either they were interested in tm or they hadn't heard of it but you felt that it could be good for them mm. So you, you don't want to force them, you know, pre yeah. do you want to be, be all preachy. But yeah. what what might you say to them to sort of, uh, what's the word? Prod them. Entice. In, yeah, entice them or <laughs> prod them into, into learning. Um, well, it, it's like you've got like, no, did you nothing have to lose nothing to and lose. everything to gain. And like, I just feel like there's been so many benefits and gains that, you know, I, I would just wish that for, every, you know, for that other person. Hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, it, like, it's a you, new thing. Like, try it. It's into life is short. Just life is try short. It. <laughs> did you have any reservations or doubts before you learnt? No, 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 not, not, n- not really. It was like it, it, you know, it was it was an unfamiliar new uh, experience, and I just wanted to see. It was like I guess spirit of curiosity. Just you know, I didn't I didn't have any expectations. I didn't know what, it, but like I was curious enough to to find out and uh, investigate. Brilliant. Okay, and uh, if you could uh, sum up your experience with tm in five words not a sentence but just like five nouns or adjectives to describe your yeah um well i'd say pretty kind of life-changing um in terms of changing my relationship like with my thoughts as i said helping me focus um giving me clarity um and just uh, feeling like i'm in a calmer space in the world where everything's it's all okay (laughs) what i would like to do is 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 ask you to tell me how you got in how you got into doing the art Mm. and why you do this um so uh i've always kind of been you know doing a bit of drawing but never really I'd, i'd never really taken myself seriously and um, at the time, I was working in fashion as a shoe designer, and I was working in a job, and I just got to the point where, like, I loved design and shoe design, but it wasn't enough. It's a, it's a product at the end of the day, and it can be beautiful, but it wasn't enough. And I just felt compelled to start painting because it's like it's an expression of something. And that's when I felt felt compelled to start painting. And um, I'm completely self-taught. I just, in my kitchen, kind of, you know, paint everywhere. And uh, yeah, gradually sort of started exploring what I wanted to express. And it's, it's quite interesting. Like I, I knew immediately that I was only interested in the face because you know now I realize that I'm interested in communication and that's where all your character and your personality are communicated. Um, and quite quickly, actually, I decided to just isolate the mouth because I found that to be really expressive just in itself. And also the mouth is like a focal point for so much. It's intrinsic to life. You know, we communicate with our mouth, whether through speech or expressions, you know, all our kind of emotions. Um, but also you breathe and you eat and, you know, um, also kissing another type of connection and communication it's it's just kind of a focal point for so much that um 
it was interesting. When I did my first exhibition, I'd met another artist near where I live and we just did a DIY exhibition together. And um, this was the first time my paintings had left my kitchen. <laughs> so it was very, uh, it was nerve wracking. And um, people were fascinated by the, the mouths that I'd done and I, I sold all of them on the first night. And that was really interesting to me, I think, because what I was doing was a communication with the world. People were kind of receiving that communication and connecting with it. So it made me want to explore further this subject. And um, that's what I've been doing since for maybe 10 years, maybe a bit more. Behind you, I, we can see a couple of pieces yep. that you're getting ready for a show in London in Yeah, I have an December. exhibition at the end of November coming up at Grove Gallery in London and the theme of the exhibition is the colour red and I'm sort of exploring that through partly through my usual subject of the mouth but also another couple of things um, and yeah, I've, I've like since I started painting, red is the color that I've always been drawn to most. And you know, my, everything's always covered in red paint, but I didn't really know why. But now I've sort of, you know, I've started investigating the color red and I realized what a special significant color it is. Like culturally, you know, all the different cultural meanings, um, the, the, the different meanings in nature, but also physiologically because like, uh, it's, it happens to be the colour with the longest wavelength of all the, vi the, spe the visible spectrum to us, which means that like it, it appears closer than it actually is and it kind of hits you first. So it, it has the consequence of actually raising your heart rate um, and exciting your subconscious. So that's why it's kind of associated with drama and danger and, you know, all these things. Um, so yeah, it's a very special colour. What, what's the process? Um, we'll show some of these, but what's the process be behind making this? Obviously, it's now August and your show is November, so it's obviously a long term. Yeah. Why does it take so long? So the, the process it begins with a photo shoot. Um, there's me, just me and the subject. I, so these are real people's lips? They're all based on real people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I get the person, the subject into my studio cool. and I'll put, I'll do the makeup. I do very specific lighting. And then um, it's just me behind the camera and the person in front. And uh, we'll have this sort of interaction and I'll take lots and lots, maybe like thousands of shots of this person kind of expressing different things. Um, and those images will kind of form the inspiration as you know the starting point for the painting and i you know my aim is to sort of capture the the expression of that person mm. um i recently sometimes i do um commissions of, of people like I, i'm i'm doing um an exhibition in september actually which is with the english national opera and i was given a subject from the english national opera i got given um benson wilson who's a baritone singer and i was sort of invited to make a piece um based on him like capturing him so i thought what better than a, a mouth portrait because he's a singer so i had him come into my studio and i photographed him while he was singing opera in my studio and that and that's what i based the piece on are these are all going to be plain or i mean you've mentioned the crystals mm. so, so t tell yeah. us about the crystals um, yeah, so a, a couple of pieces, probably just one piece at this point, is going to be completely covered in crystals because um, I, I kind of I love to explore light reflection. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, that's Does that be the heart one that we, I can yeah. show the heart. The heart yeah, one. yeah. Okay. Um, so I often use diamond dust and glitter and glass and all, all these things, but I also use uh, neon. So I'm going to have a couple of neon pieces in the show as well is that like a spray no it's actual real neon what is neon then um <laughs> you know neon light 
Yeah, but what is so, it? What is neon? Is it? It's I a know gas. What a neon. It's a gas. Oh, it's a gas. Yeah. So basically, you have like a glass. Have tube. you got any here? Can we inhale it? Um, <laughs> I'm afraid not. Does it I, make you high? I don't know, actually. Like, if if I had a tube, you could break it and inhale it. But, um, <laughs> that might kill me. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's like a neon tube. This is like the old school neon. It's like a neon tube, and it's filled with neon gas, and it has electrodes at either end. And when the electricity goes through it, it lights up the gas. It's magic. It's wow. like magic. It lights up the neon on red oh my god that's going to be amazing yeah can i come to the show yeah <laughs> so uh yeah so basically what happens is I'll, I'll make a painting and then i will like attach like for example if i was going to do it with this painting i would put like a neon outline which kind of gets attached and sits kind of to the front of the artwork gotcha. and it kind of is it does feel like magic actually because when you turn it on the light kind of transforms the painting, so it kind of changes the colour of the painting. So you don't wow. know how it's going to be until you put the neon on and switch it on. Wow. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, I think that's all. That's, that's fantastic.